Welcome to a mobile home makeover. In this episode, I'm going to cover how to install a 30 inch Frigidaire induction cooktop. If you're here for just for that, uh, stick around. It's going to be coming up soon, but there's also just a little bit of color about the whole project. It's Monday and I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by what I have to do, but especially maybe because I got to go back and fix some mistakes I've made, like some drips. Got to take it one step at a time. Here's a little bit of a situation. We got this little, uh, I guess, backsplash thing behind the sink. And uh, I figure I should probably put some caulk right here. The question is, will it make a mess? So there's that. I'm gonna do the bottom when I've got a thing of silicon open for the sink replacement. Now let's move over here. I'm also gonna have to uh, do a smidge of touch up painting and that clear silicon caulk around there. But I'm gonna start looking at the cooktop replacement right now. So we've measured this before. And now I'm measuring it again. This is about 19, it's either 19 and a half or 19, uh, you know, underneath this plate right here by, well, this is 28 and a half, maybe 28. And the cooktop that we got to replace it is 30. So I'm gonna have to see what the hole is like underneath. And then uh, I'm going to have to see what kind of hole requirements it's got for the cooktop. And then um, I'm going to need to open up the cooktop. And uh, apparently in shipping, it's often the magnets get displaced in this particular cooktop. And uh, I'm going to need to open it all up, get those magnets in place. Take this one out, put that one in, or enlarge the hole if I have to. Put that one in, wire it up. Should be no problem. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to finish all that today. So underneath here, you can see that I got a fair amount of paint up onto this old cooktop by accident. And, uh, and you can see the opening is really um, just the size of the cooktop. by 18 and a half. Let's go see what the cooktop is. So here is the new cooktop. It is a uh, Frigidaire induction cooktop model FFIC 3026TB. I think it's called a gallery or something. Anyway, uh, it's pretty big and heavy. I'm going to move the box down off this off here. So the reviews I've seen online uh, man mention how much damage this thing takes in shipping, and uh, ours is no exception. Yikes! There's even the uh, even the styrofoam in here seems to have sh shifted around. But look at that! It comes with a little cooktop cream, and it's very pretty. directions some electrical cords I might need to get a an adapter to adapt from aluminum to uh, this I'm not 100% sure right now well that's a 
basically a piece of glass, and I gotta be careful with it. So let's take a measurement here. 28 by 19. So I might have to do a little cutting. But I have some good news, which is that when I pick this up and jiggle it around, there's nothing moving in there. So I don't think I need to take it apart and make sure the magnets are in place. I think that the magnets are in the right spot because nothing shifted. It all sounds pretty groovy. So that's cool. I'm going to start on taking the other, uh, the other cooktop out. I'm going to need to figure out what power is for that cooktop, among other things. I'm going to need to read the directions on this one. So of course, to turn off the power, I need to peel this back. There's one marked range, number six, but we've learned that this over here is not necessarily that um, reliable, but I'll start there. If I can find number six. Should be a 40 amp breaker. Let me turn on the torch here. So there's a 40 and it's labeled number six. That's a good sign. I'm going to try this one. So the light that indicates this is on is broken, so I'm just going to have to turn it on and see whether it heats up. So far, nothing. That's a good sign. What about this guy over here? Oh, the oven's still working, so that's a different circuit. If it is. And this is still cold. Try another one just in case. Yep, I think I got the right breaker. Now I gotta go down here and start disconnecting stuff. Start just by taking these screws out and seeing what's inside the electrical box. And I have to take this clamp off. That's what I need to come out of the whole way. So from what I can see, it looks like copper wire in here, which is nice. It means I won't have to get an adapter for aluminum wire. Now I'm just going to loosen up this guy, just enough to pull this other cord out. And I'm going to disconnect these different wires in here. Oh, I should probably take a look at the wiring diagram because I'm now seeing I've got one, two, three, and then a fourth coming from the house. And I think I'm going to have a four wire uh, installation. So let's check this out. That, uh, that build these things are no dummies and they jam a big instruction book in there. That, but they also give you this one little sheet, cheat sheet basically, that um, tells you what you're really going to need to know. Looking like... I'm basically going to be uh, uh, connecting it up um, this way, four wire grounded junction box. And um, it looks like I'm just going to repeat basically what's in here. That's nice. So now I'm just taking apart what's here. I'm going to take out the old one before I can put in the new one. So. Getting these wires out of here. Now looking up at this one, it looks like there's some clips kind of holding it in place, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. another YouTube video. <laughs> so prying at this, lift it up a little bit, 
but not a lot. So I need to figure out what's clipping this in. Well, I haven't watched the video. I've just poked around a little bit and I managed to get this one clip right up. I think it's an issue of pulling them out like that. Maybe. This might be the one-way trip for these clips. Probably don't need to mention how dynamically disgusting the grease is that's coming out of here. Hopefully you can see this. It's starting to come up a little bit. Planning on reusing this counter, I kind of got to be a little gentle here, but it's starting to move around. There's a big screw right up here, and another one right there. That definitely seem to have some part of holding this in place. I can't see what's in the back, so I'm going to stick the camera back here and see whether there are more of those screws or clips or I don't know what back there. I'm guessing they wouldn't install anything in the back where nobody could see it. So it might be an issue of pushing it up from the back and that way. I'm holding this in place still. Clips, get them out of the way. I don't need to hold it up. Put it up there on the countertop. God, this breeze is disgusting. In hindsight, it might have been better to paint this before or to do this before painting everything pristine white. Oh well. Huh, I don't know what these are, but they were somehow keeping this in place. Well, now I'm gonna spend some time cleaning up this gross hole. Then I'm going to measure to see if the new one will go in, and then I'm going to read the directions. Just under 19, which means I'm going to need to cut this edge just a smidge. Hmm. But it also means maybe this chip will get covered, so that's good. So I'm reading the directions, which are actually fairly simple and short. Are fairly short, not that explanatory. And they say here, basically they uh, they want you to put... So I'm, I'm going to have to make this hole bigger, but they want me to put this bracket right here. However, <coughs> the directions say... The retainer brackets must be installed to meet local codes or in their absence with the National Electrical Code. And of course, everyone online is like, yeah, just put like a bead of silicon caulk around here and drop the thing in. So, yeah. I'm probably going to do it the right way. But screwing edgewise into this MDF. Uh, it's a dicey, dicey proposition, so I'm going to have to definitely drill the holes ahead of time. Here's the old one. Got a smidge bent in the removal process. Well, I checked with my in-laws to see whether they had a router to uh, cut this little chunk out of the, ca uh, no, the countertop, and they don't. So I'm going to rely on this uh, jigsaw that came with the house. And uh, I'm going to go get some new blades for it so that um, I'll have a nice fresh blade on there. Alright, I'm walking over to the hardware store because I can. And there you have it. And without the dogs around, I don't really have an excuse to go for a walk every day. Gotta have a little stand by me moment. I got some blades, but then steel wool. It turns out I need a number three to deal with rodents and uh they're all out of three so i guess i'm gonna get this multi-pack 
didn't check what time I left, but I think that took all of less than 20 minutes round trip. I watched a couple of videos about how to enlarge this hole, some things to be aware of. I'm not going to obviously move it any further back. I need to t take it from the front and sides. And the jigsaw should be a fine tool for doing it. I need to tape over this laminate to make sure nothing gets scratched up and it helps hold everything in place. And about these brackets, I watched a video about how to install an induction cooktop. And of course, they said you don't have to borrow them with the brackets, but I'll probably still use them. Checking the measurement is critical. I only have an inch, an inch back here to play with, and I believe the back of this, the back of this guy overhangs the cutout by almost an inch. So that's going to butt right up against my wall. So I might need a little extra space in the back. We'll see. My cooktop measures 21 and a half across the top, so it's going to be right there, which is going to be tight on this countertop. They said always cut to your minimum cutout dimension which in my case would be 28 and a half across. I'm going to have to expand to 28 and a half, and I might cut a quarter inch on either side, or I might just cut a half inch on one side. Minimum depth they want is 19 and 5 eighths. <laughs> And it looks to be also stapled in there, so I'm going to have to pry it off a little bit. It looks like it was also glued. With the counter support gone, I um, I have uh, an inch and a quarter of room in here. Oh no, not even one inch. One inch. So, and I need to expand. I need to expand by five eighths of an inch. So, it's gonna be a squeaker. I've got this all marked out. My 19 and 5 eighths here, and my 28 and a half over here. Now all I've got to do is cut it. For that, I purchased some new blades for this old jigsaw, and uh, I got blades that, um, well, the unfortunately the teeth are aimed up, which is not great for laminate. It, these should be sideways, but they're for making fine cuts, so... two issues I'm going to deal with. One is these corners, and I think an angle grinder will deal with that. The other is this missing support piece right back here. And uh, you can see that the, you know, everything just has a lot more flex when that's not there. And uh, when I hang cabinet doors off of here, you know, there's going to be a lot more stress on here than just sitting there. So I think I need to come up with some kind of reinforcement. drop the cooktop in here as a test uh, you know before I deal with this back and forth problem and everything but these spring-loaded clips on the side and I'm nervous that if uh, I put it in there it's not gonna want to come out so I'm not sure what to do I guess I'm just gonna go for it um, Yep, 
it's gonna fit. Ideally, I'd be using two different sizes of nails, one and a quarter uh, for most, most of this. That's, that's a one inch right there, and it's just not that much of a dig in, but one and a quarter would probably be up there, and that would be much better, but unfortunately I don't have any one and a quarter nails, so I'm just going to use these one inch. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. How I don't precisely know. <sighs> I'm looking at my scrap wood pile and I'm thinking, you know, this fan blade is probably the closest I have to the right width. So I'm just going to cut a chunk out of this bad boy. Guess we won't be recycling that. For this I'm going to use an even shorter three quarter inch staple. Or a three quarter inch pad now. That's solid, I hope. So yeah, this is uh, nice and secure. And the pieces are low enough profile that they're not gonna interfere. I think uh, I'm gonna say that's a success. This is pretty delicate stuff, so I'm pre-drilling the holes for the screws to the bracket. The brackets are in place. Uh, <laughs> had to re-drill this hole, and, but I think it's going to be okay. Now it's time to peel off the tape and put it in. I've seen different opinions about whether to use a bead of silicon around this. Since these directions say don't say anything about it, I'm not going to do it. Turns out I... Uh, Cut that chip that I was worried about, so I cut it clean away. You know, there's like a, just a little bit of a gap here from difference in the height of the countertop. I don't know, since it's going down, but I think I am going to put a bead of silicone caulk in here. It's going to make it hard to get it in and out, but that's just how it's going to be. The videos I saw online called for black caulk. I would settle for clear caulk, but the only kind of I have is white, and uh, I'm not going to settle for that. So I might just hold on finishing this project until I can go get caulk. Unfortunately, the hardware store just closed.
So here's the issue. You can see that there's a gap here on both sides. I think it's, you know, from uh, the countertop drooping basically over time. The problem with leaving it like this is that messes will get underneath there and then it'll be a pain in the neck to clean up and things will drip down. So that's why I want to get some caulk to put in. And that's going to require waiting till tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for watching. In part two, I'll actually be hooking up the cooktop to electricity and testing it out. So uh, like and subscribe to uh, see that video. Thank you.